Okay, so getting back to it, that was my buddy Jake, Jake Spencer. He just got added to uh, the unofficial Time Warp group. Uh, him and his brother Dave have raced with us before. They were trying to uh, get back to maybe a little racing sometime this winter. But anyways, a couple guys that I work with. So, one more thing I gotta get to on this before I move on. This, um, this uh, um, pressure valve, this has a moisture trap on here, okay? Um, it's got a little, this will fill up with, you know, start filling up with water. You gotta get rid of that. And you gotta be paying attention. You'll notice if some water is coming through your hose and it doesn't take, you know, very much at the bottom of this uh, collector to start pushing some beads of water up the, um, you know, the cage here and into the hose. And you'll see that spitting through and you'll go, what, what, what the hell was that? It was like, you know, you notice water is coming through. But anyways, um, you know, if you don't have a compressor that has a moisture trap on there, then you can, you can go to a moisture trap like this, an inline moisture trap. These work great. You know, um, a lot of, uh, you know, I don't know if O'Reilly's or something has, but I used to buy these at like an auto body supply. Um, I'm sure Amazon, you know, everything's on Amazon now. When I bought the little three-way for the uh, compressor, you know, Amazon, seven bucks, they delivered it to your door. You know, there's 20 different ones you can choose from, but it's essential that you either have this in your, you know, your hose, if you have the, you know, I have I have the hose with the little connectors on it, but this, this you need the bigger uh, Pache style you know, one to go on here. But I, I have all my hoses worked up for that. I think it's called one eighth inch, but whatever. So moisture trap, very important. And then uh, something I just touched on briefly before was, you know, the need to possibly strain your paint. I don't feel like I need to do it very often. A cone strainer, some of these cone strainers are, are pretty good. I didn't buy these for airbrushing. These I brought for um, doing some cabinet finishing. And it's got a real stupid configuration to the to the cone so it's you know this is just an example of one but you got to find one that has if you're going to use this for your airbrush paint that has the screen right down to the bottom of the cone all right what i like better than that is um something that we use in the painting industry all the time is a nylon strainer bag now what i would do with this is take like the end of a brush and a and a you know i got plenty of these laying around believe me you open that up, jam there, jam a little bit of the um, of the uh, nylon strainer bag, you know, into the into the uh, uh, you know container of your choice. Pour some paint through there, and you can reuse this bag. But you carefully pull it out, squeeze that through there. This is a pretty fine mesh, and that'll get rid of a lot of the chunks and stuff. Uh, if you're having any problems with that and then then I would you know I would pour a whole bottle in a tube of paint in here and then pour it back in you waste some paint when you do that Okay Anyways So I don't know. I think that's uh, there's some other things that I want to get to I'm gonna get to some uh, liquid mask and Some guys were asking about cutting and shading and I got a bunch of things that just you know pop up when you're when you're going through that I'm going to talk a little bit about The most important tool of the whole job right here your exacto knife a couple different things about this You know that's going to come up in the next couple here pretty soon. So uh, it was awesome to get the questions from you guys uh, Yesterday it was so cool to see the interest and everything and thanks a lot and uh, see you soon. I I I Keep painting.